Okay, so last time, as a reminder, uh, in session 161, uh, <clears throat> I. <laughs> Alright, so uh, a couple things happened. Um, at the beginning of the bra uh, brain. At <laughs> brain. Game. <laughs> at the beginning of the game, um, uh, Leo's brothers had stopped by at Keep, uh, formally inviting uh, Rain and friends to a bachelor party that is going to be coming up in about a month. Um, during the session, also during the session, uh, Melanie was talking to Tegan about getting a prosthetic for a one-legged duck named Quackers, also having Shadok uh, do some work for him in return for said prosthetic to be put on the duck. Also, there was a lichen ferret that was found that was called Cheese. Um, Tilda spoke with her father for about possibly sending aid to those affected by the explosion in Dorinathil. Uh, father suggested if you want to do this efficiently and quickly, faster throughout might be by less me legal means and gave names of two individuals that he had heard might deal with that kind of thing. You know, just uh, theoretically speaking. Theoretically, yeah. It's all theoretical. Like, if I were to have dealings with these, with the black market, here's how I would go about it, the book. If I did it. If I did it. Which I did not. Would not do, obviously. I wouldn't do this, hypothetically. Um, there were two dates in the game. One was Tegan uh, taking Zaitari out to a dinner in the field, serenading with a song he wrote, having fireworks and an engagement ring presented. And Tilda had, well, other than having some wild dreams uh, about possibly walking and talking with Arathus. Um, possibly. Possibly. <laughs> um, uh, and being woken up by Trixie after yeah. which. Yeah. Uh, Theo also had a date planned uh, yeah. as well. That included a dinner by a celebrity chef, a really nice bath, uh, jewelry, and a gift, which was the gift. Um, you guys also during this session had sent the Disc of Night to the Plain of Ooze. Cool. Where it belongs. Where it belongs. Um... Also, you made the decision of who should be the fifth for the tournament, um, that being Tilda. And then, after that, uh, you guys, you know, handed out the orbs. Uh, the day came for you guys to be transported. You guys were transported. And you are currently in this city, as depicted. Florida. Over here. Yeah. <laughs> Sure, Florida. It, it's Florida. I'm sorry, it looks like an aerial picture of Florida. <laughs> to but me. the rice paddies! Swamps. Rice paddies! <laughs> Swamps. <laughs> Anyways. I'm sorry. My gringo-ness is showing again. We can settle this very quickly. Do we see any mouse ears anywhere? <laughs> If it's not, then it's not Florida. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, with your perception check, I'm not going <laughs> to say you didn't see any mouse ears. Um, and then, you know, Lyris greeted all of you guys, told you a couple of the rules, and literally just banished somebody who tried to start trouble, like, at the get-go. Um, you also have a guide in front of you uh, who has not given their name yet but is you know asking you like ask, well is to guide you to your uh, abode for the next couple of days um, and they speak to you in a well so their their mouth does not match the words that reach your ears 
um, as if you were, as if most of you are listening to somebody who speaks common. Um, so you're not exactly sure how maybe there's like some translational device or magic going on between you guys. Um, the words from their mouth do not words match the words that are going into your ear holes. Gotcha. Uh, but it is very hot. It is very humid. Uh, there are tropical trees everywhere. Uh, there are actually most of the housing are is built above um above they're like sitting on platforms or stilts of some sort giving you the impression that this area might flood on occasion so since the all these houses are built high off the ground um in the surrounding areas there are uh rice paddies in the distance um you you uh it's easy to see there are, there, there are rice paddies uh, most of the people who are working uh, there are already like water that comes above their ankles while they're like pulling up weeds and planting seeds and whatnot. There are water buffalo that are plowing new areas within the rice paddies. Uh, there are people on the river who are not in your immediate vicinity that look like they're selling wares or going to and fro from certain places. Um, yeah. Uh, and yeah, it is, if it looks, it's very reminiscent of Southeast Asia. One might say it's very reminiscent of, say, Thailand, for example. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the Thai um, lettering in the upper right-hand corner. <laughs> is it hot and steamy enough that Mel is going to start making saves based on her armor? Um, or is it not quite that bad? It's getting there. Um, you, you've only been here for a few minutes, but if you had to spend an hour in this heat and humidity, you think you're going to have to start making saves. Partly because I don't know how much we want to do until meeting your friend in the uh, matches. And partly because it is damn hot out here, I think we should probably find our rooms and maybe uh, get ready for the next match. Uh, Hilda's already like talking with the guide, the guide, and saying, "You know, could you lead us to our rooms, please? This is this heat is unbearable." Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, of course. Uh, by the way. Um... Uh, my name is Juan. I will be, you know, uh, if you need, I will be your personal guide for the duration of the tournament. If you follow me, please. And she, yep. Uh, if, and she is going to begin walking um, uh, to the main street and leading you to the, uh, to your abode. Uh, I remember that all of you made perception checks uh, last session because you wanted to see if you saw certain individuals. Mm -hmm. um, Zaitari, it's very hot. <laughs> you're yeah. you're fine with heat. It's the humidity. It's humidity. Yeah, it's the humidity that's yeah, really it's doing to you. no favors to my hair. No. It, yeah, it, both <laughs> both Zaitari and Tilda are like trying to fix their hairs and like, oh no, <laughs> we hate it. Um, Sorry. So, looking around immediately, um, Gokur is here. Like uh, he, among a lot, he's he's very he's not difficult to pick out from a crowd. Um, Aifa, he is much older than you had from when you had last seen him. Um, he is very heavily scarred. Uh, he's got a beard that, like, goes down to the, like, his mid-chest. That's trimmed fairly neatly. Hair is completely white. Um, he's 
the best way I can probably describe it to you is he's built like a shit brick house. It's just like mm -hmm. he's 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 got some inches on him now. Got some inches in the height department. Got some inches in the width department. Yep, this this guy's been somewhere, probably like punching pillars of stone or some stupid shit. But he's here. Okay. Cool. Am I able to see any like uh, any kind of like runes or markings or anything on him that could indicate uh, some supernatural power, like the ability to punch through somebody's chest and rip out their spine? Um, <laughs> like you one know. arm is like tattooed or like there's some like old one venom type ooze <laughs> happening like anything like that um just as examples just as examples. Yeah, you know. uh he does have some he he does have some uh tattoos um they appear to be like some kind of like leather lettering of some sort, but you think it's not really a language. It's more for like a rune type purpose. However, they just look like mundane tattoos to you right now. Okay. Um. Um. If he if he looks at me or looks in my direction, I'm just gonna make like I'm gonna gag <laughs> and then point at him and then make like a crybaby face. <laughs> He's not looking in your direction. However, he is flanked by several other individuals. They seem to be in a group. Um, and is Gosh, one of them shock. Melanie's warlord? Uh, no. He is not in Gokor's vicinity. What does the group look like? Does it look like yeah. a bunch of casters? Like frail people full of magic? Or like... Uh, I will tell you what... Shit group, houses? I, I will tell you what each one appears to be. Um, so you have a, so this, so it's weird. So Goker from, from all intents and purposes from last you had seen him, Aoife, looks human still, even though he's huge mm -hmm. now. Um, there is a pr individual that is in a cloak that you cannot, looks, you know, human height. That you can't tell the features of. Uh, there is a another human, you believe, uh, that does does not look very heavily armored. Um, may doesn't look like they're wearing leather. It could be underneath their clothing, but for for what you, it looks like they're looking. They look like they're wearing robes. Um, there's another individual that has. Um, like a, uh, a, a scale type of armor, um, probably anywhere from medium to heavy armor-ish. Another human. Um, can't see a holy symbol on the person's immediate, you know, dressings. Um, da -da 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 -da. The strangest thing you see, however, is... Flank and Gokor is a minotaur. Hmm. He's not wearing armor. And is that the only non-human or non-like standard humanoid looking vis of vis them? Visibly. Uh, the the robed individual and the armored individual look appear to be human. You can't tell the person who's in the cloak and the Minotaur looks like the only obvious non-human in that group. Do they seem to be deferring to anybody in their conversations? No, they are not talking to each other. They are not talking to anybody around them. They seem to have their attention focused on their guide. Who is just, you know, chatting away... Um, probably saying very similar things that Juan had said to you guys. I'm imagining uh, Julie from uh, Bossing Say and Avatar, where there's Judy. like Judy, that's what it was. Thank you. Where there's like 10,000 of the same person and that are all just very slightly different and they've all been brainwashed. That's how I'm imagining our Juan. Is just the, all the guides are Juan. Um... There is something that catches uh, 
everybody but Aoife's attention. Uh, and Zaitari when she comes back from her router restarting. Um, <laughs> there is like a deep like hum that starts coming from your relics. Um, mm. And and y for you, Melanie, you hear in your head, um, I don't know if you want to know about this, but I think you're, you're, um, I think he's here. That's not surprising. Um, but he's, he's got friends. That's friends. also not surprising. I would guess there's at least four friends. Friends that I actually recognize. Ooh, do tell. Um, and you got you get the gist like every anybody who has relics are getting this same information, just told to you conveyed a little like differently for for rain for example. Oh God! Um, could you stop humming for God's sake? <laughs> <laughs> Avandra is like, uh, I don't yeah. want to deal with him. He's such a dick. He never lets me do anything fun when he's around. Who? <laughs> well, Mor Moradin's little fucking disciple. Uh. Well. Uh, that's just how it be sometimes. <sighs> you, know, you gotta deal with it. Yeah, it's just a dwarven tradition this and dwarven tradition that and yeah, yeah, yeah. And she continues, she continues on and on and on. <laughs> um. For uh, for for Tilda, uh, you hear, oh no. Hmm. Mm. I know, darling. It, it's it, this is in my head. This humidity is just ridiculous. <laughs> no, besides the humidity, are we. Oh. So you remember your. How your your Sir Melanie was to supposed to be taking up a challenge within that year in a year. Well, her friends here, and she's as other friends. She has other friends. Oh, he has other friends. Ah. And there's one I don't particularly care for. Shocking. <sighs> Uh, careful, care to elaborate? So one of the friends that he's made um, friends with, or the, a comrade, one of his comrades that he has made friends with, is a god known as Mask. And Mask is, well... God of Thieves, pretty much. Ah. Yes. A very unsavory individual. Tilda doesn't say anything, but her eyes flick towards uh -huh, me. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Briefly. I, like, <laughs> I, was gonna, I was already, like, starting to write something on a piece of paper. I was going to take a picture. <laughs> I will say something about rain. <laughs> um... I didn't say anything. And then for... I didn't for, even think it. For, uh, for Zaitari, uh, good old dad is sighing, wow, this is going to be an interesting fight. Any particular reason why? Corellin's Chosen is here. Oh, Interesting. Shit. And he is consorting with an individual who ha is associated with Lyra, a goddess of illusions. Hmm. I don't know why these individuals are consorting with each other and associating them with somebody that is associated with Bane. And Moradin? <sighs> I 
second one is definitely very interesting. That's it's it's a it's a pre peculiar ca cast of characters that is for sure. But those are the five names that your relics tell you. Um, Bane's relic is here: Corellin, Moradin, Mask, and Lyra. Moradin and Corellin are both considered lawful good or lawful neutral, aren't they? Correct. Or, I mean, Corellin might be, like, neutral I think, good or whatever. I think Corellin's neutral good. I was thinking Moradin would be lawful and Corellin would be neutral or I'm fairly sure chaotic. that Moradin is lawful good. Hmm. All Weird about that, that tradition and shit. Bane. Since Bane we is... We used to uh, work with a cleric of uh, Moradin back in the day. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Salga. Dude. Um, or, um, try to go find I, the special beer recipe. Yeah. Deal. Oh, oh god, that's been a while. I know. That's what I said back in the day. Hmm. But yeah, all all most of the most of your guys' relics have kind of like the same like why are these people all working together kind of like vibe. Other and than the Vandras, Avandras like, can we fight already? <laughs> Yeah. Um, when do we get there? <laughs> I'm gonna ask my relic if it seems like they're those all those relics are grouped together definitely, or it's just that they're maybe all here and they're just reading them all at once because they're in the same plaza. Um Yours uh uh Cord's relic says I think they're all together. They're coming from the same direction. <sighs> Weird. Did we uh you... establish who Oh fuck. Um Hole Punch Man. Uh go yes. with he's here. Go core. Yeah. Yeah, but who's he with? Because that's when my internet went out. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, a Minotaur, a dude in some cloak, uh a dude in some scale armor, and I don't remember the rest. And okay. a dude in a uh, dude uh, a person in some robes. Yeah, I'm trying to determine who all is here from the material plane. I feel like the Exalted is uh, the group of the motherfuckers that have all the um, relics like we do. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Rain, as you are scanning, Rain and Aoife are, as you are, and probably Melanie too, as the three of you are scanning the crowd, you do see Noah, the Paladin of Bane. And that's he's already... the guy who's who... yeah. That's the guy's name. Okay, yeah. I couldn't remember mm -hmm. his name. And I just remember him as fuckface. And Oops. he's not looking at you, but there's a dwarf in his group that's looking directly at you guys, and you kind of see him like, um, oh good, and nudge a what looks like to be a high elf, a female high elf with like long blonde hair and uh, that Corellin. Bitch. Yeah, she's, <laughs> and she's looking at you guys too. And soon, soon, all of them start to take notice of you guys. Um, I'm gonna yeah. walk over. Uh, um, uh, I'm gonna just. Go I'll uh oh, eyes. robot. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna remind you, Lynn, that we are actually moving. As a group? Yeah, Juan's already like, this way, please. Uh, Juan, so, hold up a second. Uh, uh, just one second. I've got some people I want to go say hello to, if you all don't mind. Do you want to come? Um, yeah, of, of, of course. I, I I mean, how else would you find your way around here if I... Okay, well, I'm coming! <laughs> As you go off to the group. Yeah, I'm a step behind Melanie. Right now. Um... Yeah, Aoife's right there with uh, okay. Melanie. You're you're maneuvering yourself through, through... Tilda has rolled her eyes and is like taking up the back. It's like oh. We're gonna get and you here... home real quick, Tilda. <laughs> <laughs> um and as you're approaching um their guide who is a tall 
individual with like fishermen like loose fisherman pants and just a scarf tied around his na head uh, as you're approaching you here so uh your your abodes will be this way um if you need any thing as you see the group uh approaching the the poor guide is just looking back and forth and like slowly sidestepping his way over hello my name is Juan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see. <laughs> but it looks like most of the group was just like, hey. Um, uh, as, as soon as you guys, you know, come within... Okay. As soon as you guys come within, like, speaking distance, uh, the... <laughs> high, the yes. female high elf says, Oh! Hello there. Uh, can I can we um, be of any assistance to you? Oh, I just wanted to come and say hello to the person who's apparently going to come and fight me here in a few months. <laughs> Lovely to see you again. Really weird company you're keeping with the whole, you know, Bane relic. And then you're with Moradin, and I'm going to guess you're with Corellin. And, uh, you know, I really didn't think that they got along with Bane, but... Hey, you know, love conquers all, I guess, right? <laughs> well, I uh, like and you see like the um the the uh the woman who's had, you know, the elf woman that has stepped in between you guys. Like, eh, I would say I, I and she says like in in a, in a like sort of straightforward fashion, uh, we have a common end goal, I suppose. Isn't that right, Noah? <laughs> and like Noah does not say anything. He just, like, looks at you, like, with this, like, you know, like, an emotionless expression on, on your, on his face. Um, and the high elf continues, uh, my name is Ishela, as you could guess, I am. And, you know, you, sh you see her, uh, pat her sword. It is a very elaborate, beautiful, jeweled, uh, long sword. Um, if you had to guess, that's probably the relic. Um, uh, and you must be, uh, Sir, Sir Melanie, I, su I, I, I suppose. Um, I'm gonna be honest, you're much nicer than I assumed you'd be. It's lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you as well. You know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm typically the person who, you know... Can I make an insight check? <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. Sure, go ahead. Well, somebody has to do all the talking around here, and, you know, all big and scary back there is going to scare too many people, oh, cool. right? Um, sorry, I sent it to myself because I was adding stuff in. Uh, 17? I can send you a screenshot if you yeah, want. That's fine, it's fine, I believe you. She is very difficult to read. Really? Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing she's a charisma. Oh, I mean, absolutely. Um, like she she looks very pleasant and friendly, and she seems like she is you know generally doesn't want any trouble. Yeah, Tilda's oh. not taking that at face value. That's that's a typical like uh court intrigue sort of thing. Like she just kind of she's not starting anything, but she's Do I did hi. Do I get me vibes off of this bitch? Yeah, you got you. Well, for sure you get you. Go, you've got me vibes. Yeah, as in like Zaytari is like she's like me. A bard? No, like a a warlock. High charisma can bullshit their way through stuff and is probably a warlock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's kind of what Tilda was going into. Was like. Uh, but yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, had 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 a lot had a lot of spicy food for lunch. Um, I mean, and she's like looking at. So this is who you see. You see Noah, uh, the person that Melanie had beef has beef with. Uh, the female high elf. Has, hey, he started it. <laughs> 
he, he did. Uh, the high elf introduced, introduced herself as Ishela. Um, there is a male dwarf uh, there who has a very, very impressive looking warhammer at his side. Uh, also with a fi very finely crafted shield and heavy armor. Uh, there is a tri a female triton with shock sky blue hair. Um, and it seems like her eyes are completely white. Uh, but she is looking around. She does not appear to be blind. Um, she is, you know, looking in your direction, nodding with Ishaelia's words. And then there is a halfling there um, in leather armor. Just has, uh, has a pretty, like, beat up, uh, probably a nose that's been broken one too many times. A couple gold earrings. And he's, like, just grinning and, you know, relaxing comfortably by uh, Ishaelia's side. Watching that motherfucker making sure it doesn't go from pocket. Um, <laughs> I was about to say, we found the thief! <laughs> yeah, really. Um, did we actually get, like, a little uh, handout when we came here of the, like, the people that were up against the bracket? Or is this the bracket that we have just for us as players? Um, no, you got a handout. Uh, Juan had given you a handout. Everybody knows who they're fighting in the first round and possibly the second round. So... Are you the Exalted? Uh, yes, we are. Uh, not the most clever name, but, you know... I'm, I'm going to say over the brooch, nailed it. <laughs> not the most clever name, but, you know, you, I figured short, sweet, memorable, that kind of thing. Uh, obviously, for the items we carry, um, similar to yours, of course. Mm. We threw one in the... Well, <laughs> toilet. Uh, what? <laughs> The, the plane of ooze is basically a toilet. Let's be honest. It's um, true. <laughs> okay. I'm just... I'm not going to tell him where it is. Uh, well, I just really was surprised uh, when Noah first came to uh, call on me. I didn't get a chance to notice who's, uh, who was bearing whose relics and such and it was interesting a couple of us had to you know had to find ours still so you know it can be a long process can be a short process it all depends on the person in the group and whatnot hmm. interesting yeah. well pleasure meeting all of you okay. i'll uh, i think that we should go to our boat it's really humid <laughs> Uh, you hear you hear the dwarf say, "This this f weather fucking sucks," <laughs> and you see the um, you you see the Triton woman just shrug, um, and the with that the the um, the halfling just kind of like combs his hand through his hair and like is already like oh, this is fucking sweaty. Mm. Uh is, does the halfling appear to have a relic or something that might be a relic? Um, when you're looking at him, he, he appears all his. Does he have a mask? No, he does not have a mask. Uh, he's not. Well, currently then, what wearing is the point? Mask. Um, he doesn't appear to have any items that look extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Everything on him appears to be mundane. Uh, mm -hmm. Roll an insight check. Sorry. Um, similar to you, uh, you get the, you get the, you get the. You think he's probably hiding a lot more under that leather armor. There's a whole yeah. armory under there. There's probably yeah. like there's probably a hammer space bag in there, and he's just gonna, he's just gonna start pulling shit out. Mm -hmm. It's like that Sinbad movie where the guy is just emptying out his pockets at the party the whole time until Sinbad needs to leave. The Dreamer animated movie. Mm. Anybody? Right. Seen it before? <laughs> 
But yeah, you 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 get the gist that he's purposely not showing off. Mm -hmm. Respect that. Right. Um, sensing that things are you know, he's like okay, guys are stepping back in. All right, right to say so as well. Let's 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 go. Let's you let's go to your 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 lovely villa that we have prepared for you. <laughs> come come. Um. Roll one more perception check, everybody. Ah, uh, yes. My best ability. Um, perception. Wow. I should change my thing, too. Oh. That would probably help. Uh, Rain Melanie... Hilda. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Rain Melanie... Brain and Melanie. Um, you do actually recognize a couple other people that are from the material plane. Um, remember that... Aoife, do you remember that monk you met at the party where the undead... Uh, yeah. He's yeah. here. Oh boy. He's here. Oh boy. And there's a ranger that some of you have met before who had a um who had a jaguar uh who had um uh a puma. Well not a puma, a jaguar with her. Mm hmm She switches here as as well. Mm-hmm. Um and they look, they're off to the side, talking amongst themselves with their guide, with what appears to be a uh, gray scale, gray skin colored uh, humanoid, uh, you think might be an Air Genasi. Um, there is a elven woman, a very tall, um, very dark-skinned elven woman and there is a um a, a heavily armored man uh with uh dark hair and pretty tan skin Odin. um but yeah uh san chi tai and switch are here with three under other individuals who was that person you were with Eva? That guy's name? Um, uh, Sanchi, I think. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, the other guy. Cor Ricochet. Huh? Ricochet. Yeah. yeah I was, I was trying Is to he here? Ricochet. He's not here. Oh. I thought the plan was for him to try to find people to come. Alas. But they're they look like they're headed towards their uh their establishment as well. If they see us, I'll, you know, give the switch the respect nod, but if not, I, uh, you know, ready to continue on in case our party starts melting, you know? <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, S Switch does see you guys, and she offers a little wave. Like, in acknowledgement. Um, but yeah. Uh, you are led down the street. Uh, it's about a five-minute walk to a very large uh, abode um, behind some uh, beautifully crafted white walls depicting some strange dragons, um, un very unlike the ones that you're accustomed to. Uh, they're a little more serpent-like with a couple body parts that don't fit them right. Like, they have, like, a stag head and um, the serpentine body and looks like their legs are, like, hooves from, like, a hooved creature such as, like, deer or horse. Um, you're led into a, a set of stairs on top of an elevated house uh, made out of some stone or sto concrete-like mixture. 
uh, into a beautifully furnished uh, house with um, that as soon as you step in seems to be climate controlled. Mm. Um, Juan tells you that there are uh, you know five five bedrooms. Uh, you have you know you you guys can you know choose your rooms among yourselves. Um, there is also a magically enchanted ice box in case you don't want to go outside, and there is a you know fire pit outside if you want to cook anything. Um, she go moves to show you that the magic ice box or the magically enchanted refrigerator is mm -hmm. stocked with you know fruits uh vegetables um meats um some from she explains from this particular region if you're feeling adventurous but there's also other items in the ice box that you guys are more familiar with from your uh area of the material plane um <laughs> uh there is also um a variety of drinks uh alcoholic and non-alcoholic uh, that you could choose from um, in the icebox and on the uh, kitchen island. And she also asks you if there's anything else you need from her. Um, if there is something you need while, you know, after she walks out, uh, she produces a small little uh, wooden carved um, disc. And she tells you, just, you know, just activate uh, these two runes on the card and I will come um, back uh, for anything you need. I'm assuming there's runes around the uh, snack size macadamia nuts. <laughs> right? <laughs> that will alert someone if we touch them. Uh, no, no runes that you could see. I know, I know. That was fucking tricky. No, the whole place is ruined. It just goes right onto our magical credit card. I, uh, I'm gonna take a bottle of wine and crack it open. Okay. <laughs> uh, no! I'm just gonna start drinking directly from the bottle. I don't even give a shit. Okay. Well, there's several, uh, there's several varieties of reds and whites, um, and some rosés, if you wish. Rosé seems appropriate for the weather. So. Okay. You crack open a bottle of wine. Um. Juan asks, is there anything else you require or any other questions before she leaves? How will we be notified when it's time for the match? Um, I will come notify you. Um, I believe, uh, looking at your bracket, you have two days to prepare. Um, Can we watch the other matches? Yes. Uh, there is nothing barring you from watching the other participants. Uh, however, just remind, just also remember, they have, uh, they can also, will be watching your match as well, but. Oh, of course. Well, who's the first match? Uh, the first match, I believe, on the brackets, uh, will be, uh, the Shadows of Guilt vers uh, versus Oceanic, uh, Operetta. When's the Exalted going? Uh, the Exalted, uh, are going on day three, so, do, 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 probably the day after you guys. And, uh, we have a friend here, uh, his name is Gokor, he's in, on one of the teams. Um, is there any chance she would know what team he's on? Uh, let me see, uh, she takes out her copy of the brackets. I'm gonna take a guess that it's, like, the Shadows of Guilt. And she's, like... <laughs> Uh, yes, he's going to be uh, going tomorrow at the Shadows of Guilds. Okay. <laughs> well, we know which matches we, we want to watch the matches. First. Do we need to call you to have us, have you come bring us through town, or are we allowed to make our way to a certain area? Uh, I can bring you, for your first time to the arena, I can bring you there, show you the best way to get there. Uh, through the streets, but after that, you are more than welcome to go by yourselves after I sh give you the um, the proper directions, or if you get lost on your way to the arena. Uh, well, I know that I definitely want to watch the Shadows of Guilt match, if you wouldn't mind coming back and is there oh, sorry. retrieving me for that. I'm oh. sure some of our uh, my other companions would be interested in watching as well. Oh, of course. No problem at all. 
Is there a particular public place to uh, that people will be socializing? Uh, there are several ta- there are several taverns and inns throughout the re- uh, throughout this uh, city that have been opened up uh, for entertainment for the participants. Um, the closest one to your area um, will will be the uh, will be the Dragon's Den. Um, however, if you wish to uh, look at the other areas, um, we have uh, we have Mangosteen Alley, um, and then we also have. Let's see. There's Mangosteen Alley. There's Dragon's Den. Where's Where's the third one? We've already seen that this area is uh, protected against violence. What about things like theft? Ah, well. If you are caught stealing from the other competitors or the denizens of this region, um, you will be escorted to the jailing area. Um, Judged by Master Lyris, if found guilty, will serve a punishment. If not found guilty, then free to be let go. Um, if you are found guilty, then you are out of the tournament. And so will your conspirators. Right. Just making sure whether I need to, to walk lightly. Okay. Uh, however, this house in particular, uh, no one but your guide and the participants uh, team of this house are allowed to be in here. Hmm. Unless you allow them to do be do so. Interesting. So, uh, I wouldn't worry about theft in this home. However, outside in the vicinity uh, with the other teams, um, I would suggest keeping your valuables on you and on, uh, closely watched. Good point. <laughs> is, there po- is there a pool? Um, Yes, uh, there is, well, it depends. Uh, the bathing house, uh, f- a few blocks down, uh, has public areas and private areas. Uh, both are uh, welcome to any of the teams. Can you drink in the pool? Yes! Great. <laughs> I'm going to the pool, everybody. <laughs> I grab another bottle of rosé. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving my bag of holding here since, uh, you know, nobody else can come in. Two fists in the rosé. <laughs> yep. so, like, Zaytari walks out the, out the door and Tilda kind of looks at everyone else and goes, what's her problem? Not what? 100% sure. I think it's just the humidity getting to us. <sighs> Um, so the three areas Juan says are three drinking taverns inns are Dragon's Dragon's Lair, Mangosteen Alley, and Guardian's Row. But there are a variety of little little eateries that you know you can also like head towards if you feel like it. Oh, what are the good like parks here? Oh, uh, parks, beaches, hiking trails, stuff like that. Oh, we have uh, several areas uh, that are designated for nature preserve slash parks. Uh, there is, if I go to the map, there is one over. Let me just just draw an X. There's one in this area. There's one in this area. You guys are currently staying over here. And if you want somewhere a little more further out, uh, that is still under the protection of Master Lyris, uh, there is an area a little beyond there. Um, They have a variety of hiking trails um, and wildlife that are local to the area, if you wish to look. Uh, Please do not hunt any of the wildlife. Master Lyris does have a harsh poaching fine. I'm not much of a hunter. Um, 
Yeah, I think I'm going to go to that one, the, the kind of out of the way hiking trails at least. Okay. For today to relax a little bit and then we can figure our shit out starting tomorrow. Okay. Um, uh, please do not poach. Uh, as you said, you are not much of a hunter. Uh, please do not feed the wildlife. They can get aggressive. <laughs> I won't. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. Any other questions? I don't believe so. Do I know I one? had one, and I can't remember what it was now. <laughs> I was waiting for other people to finish, and now I'm like, it's gone. All right. Um, Sorry. Hmm? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, no, I can't think of it. Okay. Well, uh, you have my calling card. If you need anything, just let me know. Um, and she will just, you know, start, just walk out. Uh, what are the rest of you guys doing? Uh, I don't know. You know what I'm doing. Uh, you're, 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 you're <laughs> hanging by, you're hanging at the pool. We'll get to you in a moment. Yeah, I'm going to the pool with my two bottles of rosé. Uh, Tilda grabs a bottle of white and, uh, pours herself a glass <laughs> um, and takes the glass and says, I will be in my room. And just wanders off to find a room. Okay. If any of them are particularly bigger or more spacious or more finely decorated, she's grabbing that one. Okay. <laughs> um... You look through the rooms. Each of them does have like a small private bath attached to them. Um, mm -hmm. They're all nice. very like very beautifully decorated. There looks like there's like local art and statues that line the walls. Uh, each has a pretty nice view to the river outside. As you see like birds just the tropical birds hanging parrots hanging out in the trees. Um some of the uh, floating markets are making their uh, afternoon sales to other individuals. Um, off in the distance, there are a couple kids like jumping in the river just to cool off for the day. Um, oh, We're but... not bringing back a parrot, Melanie. <laughs> <laughs> Stand in there. But yeah, it's an uh, far off in the distance. You do see people like climbing palm trees to cut down coconuts or to gather what looks like a nectar that's coming from some of the blooms, um, tropical trees. Yeah, it's like it's, it's like it's a scenic, busy, um, uh, uh, you know, not too very nice area. But yeah, they're all equally nice. Sure, they are. Um, if they are truly all equally nice, then she will just pick one. Uh, Doesn't okay. matter. But, you know. Okay. One of them has to have a better view. One of them has to have, like, something over the the rest. And she's well, it depends. Do you want to be closer to the river or further off to the river? Um, do you want to see, do you want to look at more nature as opposed to more city? City, definitely. Okay. Then you're probably going to want the one that looks directly out to the uh, to the northeast. There is a room that's directly situated there that looks out to the city. Cool. All right. Um, and Rain and Melanie, are you guys doing anything? Uh, there's no matches today, right? Uh, no, it just seems like everybody's getting settle settled in today. I'm just going to chill somewhere. doesn't really matter where. Okay, did you want Do you remove your armor? Uh, while I'm in here, yeah. But when I leave, I'm wearing it. Hmm. Did you want to chill in the house, or did you want to go to one of the uh, taverns that Juan had mentioned? Or would you like to go have a, go to like a side restaurant or something? gonna stay in the place 
where I know it's warded from any theft or other nonsense, and just chill until there's matches to watch. Okay. And Rain? Uh, I will leave most of my stuff here in uh, uh, you know, the room with Melanie. So I'm going to go hang out at the pool just in case you know anything. I don't think we should uh, have anyone separated. Makes Plus, sense. I'll get a look around. <laughs> I, I will say I'm fairly certain that uh, Eva is just off somewhere, so we're already a little separated. But uh, I'm, point. I'm quick, but I'm I'm not that quick. <laughs> None of us are. Okay. Um, when you arrive at the uh, one of the ba- um, the bathhouses down the street, uh, Zaitari. Uh, it is actually one, it rivals some of the nicer uh, public ba- uh, bathing houses that you've seen. Actually, this is borderline, you do, You would think this is more of one of the, looks like one of more of the upscale uh, bathing houses you'd be uh, accustomed to. Mm. There I'll are... take a little bit of inspiration from it for the next uh, iteration of the mansion. So. <laughs> uh, there are beautifully carved statues everywhere. Some of them made into those um, uh, into water spouts. Uh, there is a beautifully decor in the center. In the centerpiece of the ba- this bathhouse is a giant pool it's it's only a couple like you know it's like at max five feet deep at the at the deep end um but there are already a few people here that have started like soaking um including it looks like a few uh tritons um there are there looks like to be a a a few humans and some uh water genasi and you even think uh, a little further out that you see um, like a, a, a nearid of some sort mm, mm-hmm. in, in the in the deeper end of the of, of the pool. Yeah. And the centerpiece of this pool is a winged creature um, that has kind of a pointed l- layered hat. Kind of like it almost reminds you of a sh- upside down chandelier um, from the way it looks, mm-hmm. uh, and the the statue is holding out a giant pearl to a human looking individual uh, in very similar garb, and there's water <laughs> coming out from the from the mouths of these statues. Uh, there is a there are a few attendants around, you know, giving you know bring towels and bringing you know, water or drink uh, or any other drinks, and uh, there is a wo- uh, you know a, a woman uh, that is in um, just wrapped clo- like cloth wrapped clothing and says hello, uh, welcome to the. Um, Welcome to the Mung uh, bathhouse. Uh, is there anything I can help you with? Do you have any bathing attire? Yes. Um, she will bring out um, like just towels or like a bathing suit type of um, deal or like a wrap. Like she gestures to herself or... Uh, whatever's appropriate for getting in the water, I suppose. Okay. Um... Also, we have a few individuals, and she she points out that some individuals have decided to go on uh, in the nude. Oh, okay. Good enough for me. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Then Zaitari will just get changed uh, and just request a robe and a towel for when uh, she wants to get out of the pool. Uh, But then, you know, we'll kind of in the, you know, like in the movies where the sexy hot lady gets undressed and goes into the pool. That's what she's doing. Like, okay. she's clearly showing off and then getting into the water. And okay. Just good. drinking her rosé as she puts it on the <laughs> side of the pool. Nice. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so she, 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 you know, she will say, okay, anytime you're ready. Um, and yeah, 
you you know go to the pool uh there are uh like i said there are a few people around um you start just to relax um you know, it's very the temperature in here is very comfortable it's not too hot it's not too cold it just seems just right and there's like but you do see there's like a little bit of steam coming off from the pool but it's not hot mm-hmm. per se it's just comfortable yeah um, it's also humid so it kind of just does that so yes i will get into the water and chill okay um in your current vicinity uh there looks like to be that nearid that you had spot in the deep end uh, she looks like she's talking to a. He doesn't look like a Janasi. He looks like an elf, but his skin is very similar, very similar pale blue to that you'd find it with a Janasi. Okay. And also, also in the water, there is what looks to be another elf but the most striking thing about this particular person is that he has he actually has feathered wings Mm. but he's keeping he's kind of like doing that thing he's keeping his wings out of the water so he's just has his feet in the water but he's you know just enjoying the Mm ambiance ambiance um Mallory knows what these two things are. Well, I should say these two things. Uh, these two uh, elves are. Um, but Zaitari might not. Uh, can I make like an arcana check? Yeah. <sighs> please don't fail me. Please, please, please. Okay. Um, you heard of the the way? So the 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 guy with wings. It's obviously a a winged elf. Mm-hmm. Um. They're not uncommon from the plane of elemental air. Uh, the other individual, the the pale blue elf, is an aquatic elf. Not un like th- they're found in particular regions, but where your brain is probably going at this point, probably elemental plane of water would be one of the places you'd find these guys in uh-huh. the in the major cities. But yeah, they're just like they're pretty much just like you know chit chatting. The ma- the winged male elf is kind of just like hanging out by himself. Um, but yeah, that's who's in your general vicinity right now. Um, Aoife, you are going on a hike. Yep. Is there anything particular you'd like to do on this hike? Uh, just find a nice, quiet, naturey place and do some like, you know, like tai chi meditation kind of situation. Mm-hmm. Okay, sounds good. Uh, roll me a either a nature or a survival check, please, to find a nice, quiet spot. All right. It almost sounded like you said but. <laughs> a nice, quiet but. Okay. Yeah, you're able to find one not too close to the water. Uh, you did see a few very large crocodiles in there. So you figured, all right, maybe, you know, just to for like not accidentally stepping on something that looks like a log purposes and getting bit in the fi- foot. I'm just going to go inland a little bit. And you find a nice area. Uh, Not too much grass, because you know, like, sometimes grass can have things in them, especially, like, unkept, not manicured grass. Um, There are a couple parrots that are just chirping away. Um, A couple, you think you see, like, a monkey or two in the trees, but they they are out of, they're out of, just out of your um, line of sight. But yeah, this seems to be a pretty quiet spot. And you'll begin your meditation. Tai Chi type yep, deal. Th- that's all she wants to do. Okay. Um, there are point points during this meditation that you do see like 
winged individuals fly by, like humanoid individuals or maybe even demonic individuals, but they don't seem to bother you. Um, looks like they're trying to get just stretch their wings and whatnot. All right, so you're off doing that, um, and everybody else is at the house. <laughs> oh, Rain, you're on your way to the pool as well. Yeah, I don't really have anything in particular. I'm just just being overly cautious, and Rain will enjoy the pool. Maybe if they're they're anyone to get like a massage from, maybe limber up, you know, before. Oh, okay. at that time. Uh, so when you arrive, good idea. <laughs> I'm. I'm mostly staying in my armor and then, you know, I mean, take the breastplate off or whatever, but, you know. All right. Uh, when you arrive at the bathing area, uh, there is uh, an attendant that says, Hi, welcome to, welcome to the bathhouse. Uh, is there anything in particular I can help you with now? Uh, I was just thinking maybe I might lay out by the pool. Uh, do you offer any um, uh, massages here? Any masseuses? Oh. oh, yes. Um, would you prefer... Here are the endings. <laughs> uh, is the, the, um, the gender of the masseuse important to you? No, just someone with very good hands, please. Oh. oh, okay. Uh, we can do that. Um, and you can request scented, unscented oils, that kind of, uh, that kind of thing. Um, when you talk to your masseuse, uh, I will be right back. Um, she goes into a back room area, and there is a uh, woman who comes out. Um, she, you know, she has like pretty, um, you know, loose uh, like fisherman <laughs> pants, the blue, and she has like a blue wrap um, around for a top. And uh, she says, uh, "My name is Khan." Uh, I will be your masseuse for the day. Uh, is there any uh, sense that you are that you do not care for that Nothing I should avoid using? Uh, no, I think it's all fine. I just uh, mostly want to work on some of the uh, tension in my shoulder, neck, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, if you follow me, and she will like she like from behind the counter, she grabs like a bowl of like. Um, like towels and um, oils, um, and a and you know and a robe, and she will lead you to one of the rooms um, for uh, massages. Um, I'll just be like, uh, I'm nearby, Zatari. If you need anything, I don't want to cramp your style. <laughs> yeah, I'll say over the brooch. Not a problem. I think maybe some of these people in the pool might be Even on that approach, oceanic. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, probably in her hair. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> she also has her necklace on. She ain't taking that shit off. She's not completely um, naked. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, I have my jewels. <laughs> yeah, she probably uses the brooch as like a decorative hairpiece, like to keep it up and out of the water. Um, but. uh... Some of these people might be on that Oceanic Operata team, and I'm debating whether or not to warn them of their inevitable death to Gokor. I suppose it wouldn't hurt. I mean, maybe they can take a little bit of wind out of his sails if they're forewarned. Well, Before they die, you know. Yes, uh, it wouldn't hurt. <sighs> um, yeah, after a little bit in the pool, uh, Zaitari, after eyeing up everybody, is going to go over to where that uh, Triton woman is. I'm guessing that uh, that's the one that's on Noah's team. Uh, she looks different from the one that was on Noah's okay, team. Okay, not, not the same one. Okay. I thought you had mentioned it was the same one, but um, I'm going to wander over to those two that are talking. Mm -hmm. Um. Same. <sighs> so, uh, I don't know what brings you to this tournament. Um. So. Well, I'll introduce myself. Sorry, <laughs> Mallory's having a hard time remembering how to human. Um. Oh. 
Um, my name is Itari. I'm on the uh, Heroes of Leona team. Oh, uh, my name is. Uh, so the female Janasi introduces herself as. Um, where is her name? There it is. Uh, the female Janasi introduces herself as current. Very, very, very uh, original. Original name. Um, original, original character. Do not say. An original character. Um, and the Nirid that's actually like nearby, who's making idle chit chat, uh, introduces herself as Awol. Um, and what did you say initially? Um, after <laughs> introducing myself like a human would do, um, I'll say, um, oh, how, what, what drew you to the tournament? Yeah. What drew you to the tournament? What team are you guys on? Oh, uh, so, um, AWOL says, oh, uh, we're from Oceanic Operetta. Um, and you know, the promise of a wish is pretty enticing for anybody, I suppose. Uh, that is definitely true um do you know anything about your competition for tomorrow um we s we had a look at him um he's the he's in the group with the minotaur correct uh, uh the the big human and there's a big minotaur yep that's uh the big human built like a brick shit house that's uh gokor my, me and my companions are familiar with him and his <coughs> exploits on the material plane. Let's just say. Oh, I see. Not too, not too. Um, does doesn't sound like you view him if in a very favorable light, then. Uh, no, he murdered a bunch of children. Oh, that's that's uh uh the 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 new AWOL says that's terrible. Yes, at his own uh former monastery, even. <sighs> He likes to pinch holes through people's chests and rip out their spines. So be careful tomorrow. Um, oh, well, thank you. And if you can beat him, you know what? That would be fantastic for us <laughs> so that we don't have to do it. Um, yeah, the, the, uh, the, the, the Triton says, well, we're, I mean, we got here. We're a pretty tough group. So, I mean... I mean, we've a couple of us have done worse than punch a man through the chest through through a chest. Didn't rip out his spine necessarily, but uh, I I mean, if we could take out a black uh, an ancient black dragon, I think we can. We have a good chance against him. That's actually pretty damn impressive. You know, I'm curious. What did you kill to get here? We, we had to kill this weird. Honestly, the biggest Earth Elemental I have ever seen, mm -hmm. and it sucked all of the. Well, it didn't suck. It was extremely magnetic. Yeah, ours was an ancient black dragon. Um, oh, says. okay. So that was our target. Um, we had. It was terrorizing a local city, and we were able to put it down. Um, that's usually our 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 deal. We're. I guess you could call us lo like mercenaries for hire. Mm. Um, we take out, we take care of riffraff, or you know, from time to time, things from um, things come into the plane of elemental water, and you know, we have to take care of it. Yeah, yeah makes sense. Yeah. Um, but uh, elemental, you say? Well, I don't think an earth elemental would have lasted in the in in the plane of water. So I guess. Whoever the person who you know, Lyris, who ever constructed all of this like monster dropping was had the the right idea because you know you know how aquatic black dragons can be. No, actually, yeah. we've never fought one. So <laughs> we have fought a lot of things that are like dragons, but not really, honestly, too many like normal dragons. Ah. We fought a coin dragon once. That was weird. <sighs> there was also a ghost dragon. Actually, one of the people uh, who are here from the material plane, they fought a ghost dragon, but it wasn't like a 
ghost of a dragon. It was a dragon made of ghosts. Oh, oh wow, that is very odd. I heard somebody. So I, I've you know we were just listening to some of the people um, as as we were like walking through the the um, the crowds. One of the people. And I think it was one of the teams from I think it your your material plane calls it the Underdark. Doesn't sound like mm. a very pleasant mm -hmm. place. Oh gods no. We uh, we had to go there for a little bit to uh do one of our adventures. We've been on a lot. Um there was this thing called the uh I think it was the Demon Plague. Ah Am I getting that right? Am I getting that right? Yeah, it's Darren? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh basically it was causing a lot of like pretty much everybody in the underdark to go crazy and we had to fight back a lot of things killed some beholders and it was a lot it was it was pretty crazy yeah that's the thing they killed it was a it's, it was like one of hey um uh what, what's the name of the other person in this group um Kuzos and there's a there's a male triton that says yeah what was that thing that that uh what is it the arachnid team had to kill and Kuzos like uh it was a beholder but it was like I I think it the word is like a Siamese beholder <laughs> I hate it <laughs> yeah it was like it put together itself. or like yeah it, was it does together, it does hate itself says Says Kuzo's, yeah, I think that's what it was. It didn't sound very pleasant. I didn't, I, I, I take the black dragon over that any day. Yeah, no, honestly, one of, one of my companions almost died to the beholder from a disintegration ray. <sighs> so, I, I honestly, I don't want to ever fight one of those things again, let alone one that's conjoined. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, uh, and then. And then um, uh, Tannel, uh, and she uh, she points to the uh, aquatic um, aquatic elf. Uh, he heard that one of the other people had to fight. Uh, one of the other people had to fight something called a. I think they described it as I'm not sure if you've ever heard of it, like a, a sphinx. But oh yes, a, 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 a necro sphinx. Mm. <laughs> so I guess it was undead or something of that nature. Where does one find a necro sphinx? One, where does one find a Siamese beholder? I don't know. Uh, while we were waiting for everything to start back up again, um, I had my fiance. Um, gather information on what all was being killed for this tournament because we knew the other locations that they were being dropped at. So there was the ghost dragon, there was a shark, but it wasn't just a shark shark. It was like a shark that was as big as... Um, I kind of look around and I find an appropriate building mm -hmm. to, like, um, compare the size to. Which you guys probably wouldn't have had too much of a problem with, but us air breathers probably had a problem. So they killed it on a ship. Uh, and the other one was like some kind of clock tower that came out of the... Um, this is Mallory not remembering. I remember that you told me what this was exactly. And there was a coffin on the spider legs. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, one, um, what, 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 uh, one second. Oh, sure. I'm back. Sorry about that. That's fine. Uh, yeah, the, the it, it was a, apparently a wizard in a coffin on a animatronic legs that shot mm -hmm. lasers. Yeah, um, and uh, that was actually the one that uh, the shadows of guilt. I'll do air quotes um, when I say that. Um, still holding my bottle of wine that I'm occasionally taking a drink out of. Um, that's the one that they killed to get here 
Apparently, Gokor just punched a hole right through the coffin or something. So, well, we'll look out for that. Um, yeah, thanks for the thanks for the uh, warning ahead of time. Um, it also sounds like uh, what? Where are you guys in the brackets? Um, we're fighting in two days. Okay, uh, so you're probably in like a second half or somewhere in that quarter. Do you know who you're fighting? Uh, the House of the Triad. They're from Arcadia, where the, wherever that is. Uh, oh, you drew, and you, you see um, Current. She says, oh, you drew them. Huh. That's an you interesting... know anything group. about them? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're, so there are a couple groups that I noticed that had a couple non-humanoid individuals in... Uh, as part of their team, they're the they're one of them, I think. Um, they have um from what I've seen, I've seen a few of their numbers. Current says, uh, one of them is a. Have you ever heard of a Kirin before? Um, I know that it's a celestial. Um, I feel like with all the research that Zaitari has done. Breeze searching low level celestials might be something that she knows about, but that's up to you. Yeah, I, I'd say y you've done some plain research, so you can see if you've heard of a Kirin before. Okay. Uh, no. She'll describe what a Kirin is. Okay. Uh, um, and like hanging around the Kirin was like, um,. Uh, what do you call that? We don't have them too much on the uh, in the plane of water, but in, uh, in Asamar, I think what's uh, you guys call them? You know the oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah they were half human half uh, celestial types. Yeah, they were hanging with one of those. Um, I don't know the rest of the team makeup though, hmm. but I know they have the Kieran on the team. I'm gonna look over to where the um. Winged elf is that's mm -hmm. kind of just standing there by himself. Yeah, he himself. He, yeah, he's himself? like okay. soaking his legs. Okay. Hey, mm? winged elf person. Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, plane of air. What team are you on? Uh, we're on Oblivion Wing. He says. Okay, that that tracks. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> he just had, like here? awkwardly waves and just goes back soaking his legs. Yeah. Um, you see, like the uh, you see, like the uh, the oceanite operetta kind of just ignore him. Plain supremacy, I guess. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna kind of say to them, and also like loud enough for the you know, winged elf guy to hear as well. Um, you know, we're all going to be trying to hurt each other enough where we beat each other to near death to get a wish. But, you know, there's no reason we can't, like, try to get along beforehand. I, I mean, uh, the near, um, AWOL, AWOL says, yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't have any ill will towards you. I mean, we're all trying our best to come out on top. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we don't know too much about the other teams. I mean, we can guess what some of the other teams are made up of, because, you know, looking around, we, we figured some of the devils are part of the nine hell teams. Yeah. Um, there was that demon that, you know, tried to um, immediately kill somebody and just got yeeted off the plane. Yeah, that was so. stupid. Yeah, but, you know... Uh, some Demons. of them, yeah, they have violent natures. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. So still keep chit chatting with you. Um, Rain, you are having a massage. Uh, is there anything you would like to do during this massage? Like ask any questions to your uh, masseuse? Um, it's kind of random. Thing, probably asking that, but uh, ask if there's any. Gambling? Uh, any bets taken? If we're oh. here, might as well make some money. Oh, for the oh. tournament? 
for mm-hmm. the tournament or like other game? <laughs> I mean, honestly, Porque no los dos. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Inclusive, yes. Oh. Um, well, there there are a bunch of houses around the area uh, that will that do, like, card games and, like, bets on dragon chess and, like, other game like, other, like, local games. Um, you could f- usually find them attached to the taverns. Uh, gambling is not illegal here. Um... And there are, there will probably be people taking bets on the, the tournament, of course, the lo- locals mostly, but sometimes we do get participants trying to, uh, doing so as well. It's perfectly legal. As long as you're not actively trying to sabotage other teams. Oh no, I have an incredibly inflated sense of self aware If I'm going to bet on anyone, I'm going to bet on myself. <laughs> Um, okay. Well, you know, everybody here is quite confident confident in themselves. Everybody here, I hear, has killed many large and difficult uh, creatures that Master Lyris had sent out. Um, but yeah. But yeah, uh, the taverns are probably where you want to go if you want to go head in on the gambling scene. Um, all right. Uh, Aoife, you are meditating. Um, during your meditations, uh, there is a couple, uh, have you ever seen a tree kangaroo before? (laughs) No. Okay. It's what it sounds like. It's a small marsupial. Does it also have the bloodlust of a normal-sized kangaroo? No. <laughs> no, it's it, it's uh, a lot more. It's a lot more. It's more shy than okay, awesome. your typical kangaroo. <laughs> that it won't. God, it kangaroos. won't. It won't kick you. <laughs> okay. Um, you see one like during your during your um exercises hanging out, uh, on a tree branch with a little tree joey in its pouch um looks like the mom is eating some kind of like very fuzzy hairy fruit that's like white on the inside and the little tree joey is also nibbling on the white flesh of the fruit that it's been handed to and you know takes a couple bites drops it (laughs) half eaten and you know they're just chilling. Um, it's a very quiet session. A uh, roll perception check will me for me, will you? There you go. All right. As you are doing this, um, there is a buzzing that you hear, and. The buzzing starts to get louder. And then when you look up, there is what you... There is a bird person, but it looks like a bird hummingbird person. <laughs> um, very bright iridescent wings that are like flapping like a million miles a minute. And she looks like she's just plucking some fruit from the, the tree nearby the um, the true kangaroo. Um, and she accidentally drops some fruit and she says, oh, sorry about that! I'm just like mid-movement. <laughs> and I just pause and I just stare. I'm terribly sorry. Did that hit you? Aren't there other fruit trees around here? Can't you see this one's kind of being used for meditation purposes. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that what you're doing? Usually, I don't. You know, usually I don't see anybody when I'm. It's, you know, I have to go fast, and usually, uh, I'm sorry about that. I'll leave now. Sorry, bye. <laughs> and she like zooms off in another direction. I'm just sitting there, like, what the hell? And then, as you are, as you are, like, going back to your meditations, um, there is another sound 
of something like coming through a bush. And then you see like shorter than a halfling. Uh, you thought it was a halfling at first, but it's considerably smaller. And then there's this, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's this mouse biped, bigger than a mouse. He says, excuse me, have you seen a, a hummingbird person come by here I'm trying to find him? Ah, ah, they're so fast. They went that way. Thank you! Starts taking off in that direction. I'm going to find a new spot to meditate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, go roll a survival check. Um, All right. Anybody in the house want to do anything? A nice nap. Okay. You're napping. Tilda was Honestly, probably the same. Tilda's <laughs> napping. Hey, this is the best sleep you're going to get. <laughs> uh-huh. Tournament. That's what I was just thinking. Like... Um, Zaitara, you were ch chatting away. Um... Yeah, at some point, I'm just gonna uh, wish them good luck, um, and then probably go find uh, another part of the pool to just kind of vibe okay. in for a while. All right, sounds good. I'll share all the information over the bridge with Rain, and then obviously with everybody else later. All right. Um. As you are hanging out by that end of the pool, um, there is a... No, nope, nobody comes. Um, nope, okay. There, yeah. <laughs> uh, there are a couple other people who are around. Um... There is a kobold. Um, it's not Deacon. Uh, <laughs> that there's a kobold with um, a so a Snurf Neblin, a female Snurf Lion, who's just entered the bathhouse and they're just kind of chilling um, at the shallow end of the pool for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, and anyway, it's a, it's a male kobold and it's a female snurf lab and, and, you know, they're, you know, just chit chatting, talking, looks like they're sharing a bottle of what looks like it to be a, uh, bourbon of some sort mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. between each other. And then a female dwarf comes and enjoys them and looks like they all know each other. Mm. Um, and they're just uh, chit-chatting about some of the combatants they have previously seen. Go ahead and roll a perception check for me. Oh, yes. The best. Rain, I need your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh. hand her, I hand her eye stock now. <laughs> <laughs> um... They sound like they're talking about a couple combatants that seem to be from the Shadowfell. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. They're talking whether or not uh, they've met some of the individuals from Veiled League or House of the Eye. Um, they were. They seem like they're unsure. Uh, but one of the teams apparently had killed a Necrosphinx. Uh, the other. No. The, okay. Yeah. The other team. Um, they think it might be had killed. They heard rumored was a kraken. Mm, okay. So, but they're unsure of which team it might be. Mm -hmm. Um. Aifa, you have found a new spot. Uh, just as you are about to like relax and meditate. One of the plants starts moving. Um, and 
as this plant slowly starts to ri uh, rise, uh, you realize it's not a plant. It's a person. Uh, this person has what can only be described as um, a face on a like a short mushroom stalk, and the head is like a mushroom top. Um, and they they, they 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 look at you for a moment and say, "Oh, apologies. Uh, I'll be on my way now. <laughs> I think it's it's I think it's time for lunch." And you see them take out a staff and hike down the trail. Okay. Yep. Did I was that in, was this individual um, in the like the crowd when we first were dropped in? Um, as a competitor, or does do they just seem like a local? Uh they they they. You think it might have been a competitor? You didn't see any. You saw a few individuals could be that could be described as plant people or part plant or okay. plant fungus. All right. Uh, I'm just going to watch them go and then try and pick up my meditations again. Okay. You continue with your meditations. Um, uh, Rain, your massage has come to an end. <laughs> After, I guess, half an hour? Unless you wanted to continue. At least an hour. I mean, no, right. we're, we're, we got time. Okay. Yeah. You, you, uh, they, um, your masseuse asks if there's any, like, beverages you'd like to, uh, partake in, or any snacks. Something tropical and alcoholic, and I'll spend some time out, laying out by the pool, you know. <laughs> um,. Oh yeah, so they bring you like a uh, how alcoholic they ask uh, any uh, any like maybe moderate some moderate moderately alcoholic okay um, they bring you some rice wine uh, there is a hint of some kind of fruit for some reason that's in infused in this you're not sh quite sure what it is but it's like slightly sweet. But not too overpowering. Maybe some so, yeah. lychee in there. You're not sure. Got to, you know, try some of the foods we have back at the hotel and try to figure it out. Okay. And she brings in like this very large spiky fruit and cuts it open after she washed her hands, of course, and. She explains uh, in the common tongue this is known as like a jackfruit. Um, it's it's uh, yellow on the inside. It kind of peels very like in strips. Um, it has like a mellow sweet flavor to it. It goes good. Good goes good, good with the rice wine. It has like it, it cuts through the 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 sweetness. Uh, and then she'll continue uh, the massaging. Um, I guess you'll start on your uh, start on your uh, calves and legs. When we all limber for you know for kill kill people, <laughs> I just you know think about various things and oh god, how many animals are gonna be when we get back? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every time we go away, there's one at least one more when we get back. So okay, uh, is there anybody anything anybody would like to do before the Watching the tournament tomorrow. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. No, not really. Okay. Uh, we can um, we can forward to the next day for the tournament. Can we leave early enough to get like a front row seat? Uh, yeah. If you contact Juan um, early enough, uh, she could definitely get you to the arena as um, as soon as you want. Yeah, what time do the fights start? Uh, the fights uh, will start at around 11 a.m. Okay, I'll be I'll get a hold of Juan then at like 7:30. Okay. All right. Uh, Juan uh, will take you to the arena. Uh, the arena is. Like I said, um, 
I don't know what they, I forgot what they said they were going to go, but be, I'll do it whenever it is uh, appropriate, but I want to bet on the Shadows of Guilt using my head and all. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, get me in on that too. Okay, uh, so Shells, okay, so uh, when you head to one of the taverns, um, there is like somebody who does handle all the bets. Um, Shadows of Guilt versus Oceanic Operetta. Um, uh -huh. The information that you're given that, you know, Shadows of Guilt killed an animated wizard, coffin, spider, shooting lasers, monster. And Oceanic Operetta, um, their target was an ancient black dragon. Um, to tell you, like, equivalent power wise, what you'll do it uh, right now. Um, the it's a it's it's a one to one. It's pretty much to them. It's a coin toss who can win. And as the tournament progresses, you typically then there'll be odds depending on the performance of the teams throughout the tournament. Um, but right now is a one and one. Um, how much did you want to put down? You guys down a thousand. Okay. I will as well. Put me down for a hundred platinum. Okay. <laughs> Jared, you can either have the storyline you want or give us a shit ton of money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Listen, I I would be so happy to lose 100 platinum right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so You have no idea. Juan is able to get you front row seats to the arena. Uh, seats. Um, and there are, like, there the majority of the crowd is local denizens um a lot of them have like you know snacks they've brought apparently this is one of those arenas that you can bring your own snacks but you could also buy snacks as well um and they sell like uh 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 fucking roasted nuts uh fruit uh from the region um they actually have in little cups uh, this coconut cream uh, concoction that has like uh, palm seeds and lychees and pieces of jackfruit in a sweet coconut cream. I will be taking that and also whatever the most flowery, fruity fucking cocktail they can give me. Oh, oh they, you like lychees because they got lychee martinis. Hell yeah, let's go. Okay. Put some flowers in that shit. I'm good to go. <laughs> Um, and because you're a combatant, uh, the stuff for you is free. Wonderful. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Wave stock. Okay. Um, so the rules are explained. Um, it's going to be a... Oh, hold on, let me get to the rules. Because the rules are said before each uh, fight happens. Um... And before each round of the tournament starts. Uh, each team consists of five members. If a member perishes or is unwilling to continue fighting, um, then, you know, th they're dead. Um, blah, blah, blah. If the team is late by ten minutes to their match, they forfeit. Uh, teams are to fight until surrender, or if the other team no longer can do so, i.e. verbal surrender, unconsciousness, or death. The in air, the arena environments are randomly chosen, and will change every ten seconds. What? What? <laughs> what the fuck? The Hunker Games Speedrun Edition. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? This is so Yu Yu Hakusho Dark Tournament. It is. This is amazing. There was like a whole tier where like the environments kept changing and moving. Um, your first ma and as as you are like listening to the announcer say uh, these rules, um, you notice that Lyris is in like a nice little box above the arena where they could see everything, um, and there are a couple other individuals uh, with them in like brightly colored robes. Uh, with masks on. And he doesn't... Yeah, he, They don't say anything during the fight. Lyris doesn't say anything during the fight. But he looks... They look delighted to be here. 
Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, uh, there is an announcer uh, hailing from the material plane. We have shadows of guilt. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of cheering and, you know, foam fingers in the air. Some of the foam fingers I am look... heckling Gokor as loud as I can. <laughs> oh, same. There's heckling <laughs> apparently coming from your side. Boo, uh, fuck you, Gokor, you suck. <laughs> I cast a uh, thaumaturgy on Aoife <laughs> to make sure that her uh, voice is loud. Okay. I'm just yelling about how ugly he got. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, got a bald spot right there. <laughs> versus Oceanic Operetta from the Plane of Water. And you see your uh, the, your, the uh, individuals you had been chatting with yesterday, Zaitari. Uh, it mm -hmm. consists of a the Kuzos, the male Triton, um, current the female uh, water Genasi, uh, Awol, the female Nirid, uh, Tynel, the uh, aquatic elf, and another Triton that you did not see prior. Mm -hmm. Um. So. When the are when the so there is a you know the announcer gives a countdown, and as soon as he gets to three, the arena turns into something that you'd find on the plane of fire. The oh, entire arena, like the floor of the arena, there is a stone in the, a large circular platform in the middle where the two teams of combatants um, are standing currently. But all around them, there are rope bridges that connect to the platform to the outside, uh, to the edge of the arena. On the edge of the arena, on the other side, on smaller stone platforms, there are actually large ballista. It's an interactive environment. So, at first, they start going at it. The oceanic operetta looks a little bit nervous at the change of scenery that has occurred. I <laughs> um, wonder why. Yeah. Um... And this happens in, you know, of course, you know, D&D combat's fast in theory, uh, mm -hmm. in actuality. So, um, Cusco, Tynel, they all gunned forward towards their group. You've noticed Aoife, uh, the, uh, the aquatic elf, looks like to be a monk of a uh, particular school. Uh, would you like to roll a, let's just roll, like, a wisdom check. Uh, okay. Just kind of like a, like, you know, sort of like knowledge base. All right. Um, he looks like, he, he appears to be, um, a monk of the, uh, what's that, 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 that I, now I, now I'm just blanking on the name. Uh, is it Open Fist, I think? Open palm? Open palm, yeah. So he's a monk of the open palm. So he okay. dashes forward. It looks like uh, uh, Kuzo's, he is a fighter of some sort. He's got a huge trident. A Kuzco. <laughs> uh, he's got a huge trident and he's gunning forward. Um, the Nirid looks like she is... Uh, providing uh, range support, as is the Water Genasi, who appears to be a spellcaster of sorts. Um, if you guys had to guess, maybe a wizard or a sorcerer of sorts. Um, Gokor starts going at uh, the other monk, and he is easily matching him strike for strike. It's like in one of those uh, martial arts movies where each time one guy goes to hit, he blocks, and vice versa. Like, and this goes on for a number of seconds. 
Um, it looks like uh, the Triton, uh, the, f the fighter Triton, is currently going head to head uh, with. Sorry, I'm just looking at Go Cursor. With the Minotaur. Uh, the Minotaur pretty much like rakes his chest at the beginning of the fight and just has this wild, crazy look in his eyes. Probably a barbarian like um, person. And he is just using this, the biggest Falchion you've ever seen and he's going hit for hit uh with this individual uh the cloaked individual rain uh could you roll a perception check for me i will do so in a moment okay <laughs> All right. Um, you see the cloaked individual go, like, and you can spot their movements. They're 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 stealthy, um, probably as stealthy as you are. Um, you barely make out her form as she somehow, like, in like in the light of the the lava, circumnavigates the platform, goes behind Gokor, goes behind the Minotaur. And guns for the near it. Um, and just takes a huge chunk of her shoulder with this dagger that, now that you're looking at it, looks like it's coated with something. Pretty nasty. Um, and looks like she did not make her constitution saving throw. Um... And she, like, just like, she looks bad. One would say she would look bloody. Um, kind of sensing there's blood in the water, the robed individual uh, that's on Gokar's team that you had seen earlier uh, just whips up a... Um, a... Uh, Whips up a and you and those who are uh, arcane casters can can see this and Tilda, you're getting flashbacks. Is disintegrate. Oh no! And in five seconds, she is gone. Um, and like now that there's one person down, it's like. It seems to like be like everybody's like kind of on Goker's team. Everybody's kind of has this hive mind, uh, hive mind mentality going on. Um, it it's the same. Um, the the cloaked figure goes one by one for the rear deranged um, individuals and just takes them out. Um, yeah, th this cloaked individual rain looks like a blur. And it's quite possible that they might have a displacer cloak. Uh, but about, about 10 seconds in, after the first two rounds of combat, the scene changes. And now, like, you guys are still seated perfectly on, like, on the arena. But now the platform has... The platform, the center platform, is still there, but now surrounding the entire platform is nothing but air. And it looks like the the uh, the caster on Goku's team was somehow prepared for this, and as they're falling, seems to cast fly on themselves. Um, But it j and some of the other combatants on Oceanic Opera was also um, aware of this change. And a couple uh, looks like there were some emergency feather falls. But after the fourth round, um, 
after the fourth round, it it's done. Um, uh, out of curiosity, that person who got disintegrated, was it one of the ones I was talking to? Yeah. Yeah, I'll just say, damn. They were really nice. Yeah. Take a sip from my martini. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the other four were just, are not dead. Um, it looks like the other four were beaten to unconsciousness. Uh-huh. Um, but after the, after Oceanic Operetta can no longer continue to fight, uh, the match is called and the arena goes back to the original gladiator style dirt floor, dirt packed floor arena. Um, um, during that whole fight, obviously Eva was watching Gokor like a hawk. Yeah. Uh, was using any kind of weird or new techniques that I've never seen before or anything like that? I will tell you in a moment. Um... Can I just say the second that um the team member got disintegrated. I think Tilda kind of like gasped in horror and just reached out for whoever was next to her. I don't know or care who it was. Just like grabbed their arm and has looked horrified for the rest of the fight. Yeah. Is just like squeezing ever tighter. That's that's fair. That's very fair. <laughs> um I agree. <laughs> um, I don't know like I said I don't know who it is I don't care who it is I think in, in that moment Tilda just is reaching for something you know, some somebody anybody yeah. um, I'll say yeah sure it's Zaitari because uh, she was going to mention anyways to Tilda and kind of give like a reassuring grasp on the hand don't worry we won't let that happen again <laughs> I'll save the uh, counter spells for that. Um, so here's a here's a couple uh, moves that Gokor looked like he pulled out of his arsenal. Um, he looked like he had the ability to instill fear into somebody when he touched them. Um, after he was able to break away from the elf monk, he was able to get his hands on one of the other uh, tr uh, uh, spell uh, spellcasting tritons, and was able to like, after like hitting them, um, instill like a some like semblance of fear into them, um, which you sense was not normal. Um, there were a couple times where the remaining members attempted to, like, take Gokor out, um, you know, focusing all their hits on him. Um, and it looked like they were able to almost bring him down at one point, but he just got right back up. Like, like when that person, like, you got, you got, he's falling backwards, his, his eyes have rolled to the back of his head. He just stopped and stood his ground, very similar to what you probably, what Aifa has probably seen half orcs do. Yeah, so the half orcs are like um, zombies with the tub thumping and that kind of stuff. Um, the other thing that you notice, the last thing you notice, um, as the last person was uh, trying to make his uh, his stand, uh, this was the triton fighter um you notice that you know you you probably get the sense of when somebody is spending key um when he was doing this he was able to inflict a like inflict um necrosis on the part he was hitting um and he actively looked like he was doing that is this dude a way of mercy? Um, uh, with, a, with a hand of harm? That's kind of what it sounds like. Yeah. It, that is kind of what it sounds like, yeah. Uh, but uh, those are the abilities he, he showed. He didn't look and, you know, he didn't look like he was trying all too hard either. 
Like, you could probably tell when somebody's fighting when they were giving it their all. And Oceanic Operetta was giving it their all. And they were doing a decent job. But it was just the combination of Gokor and the Minotaur able to draw their attention away. And just letting that little um, stealthy cloaked individual just get behind everybody. Because Rain... Rain and Aoife, you were probably the only two that were able to track them throughout the fight. And even when you were doing so, it was hard. And they did not look like they were using any uh, extraordinary magical ability in doing so. Like not going invisible or anything like that. It looks like pure skill on that part. Cool. We know who the biggest threat is then when it comes to actually getting to combat with them. Um, but yeah. Uh, with that, um, Shadows of Yo move on to the next round. Uh, did any of you want to stay for the other rounds that were happening today? Uh, it will be Dragon Force and Final Gambit. Um, Seasons of Fae uh, versus Order of the Eternal Sun, and Wild Fae versus Matrons of the Web. Um, uh, uh, Mel will stay, but we don't have to like go through each of the games. Like, she's just gonna kind of make some mental notes mm -hmm. um, about some of the things that she finds outstanding on the matches. But it's most of these are not going to. Well, she's going to pay more attention to people in her own side of the bracket. Mm -hmm. Because on the other side of the bracket, unless they win, we're not going to be fighting them. Yeah. So. Eva's going to be doing the same. Okay. Um, I can tell you who the other teams are like are made up of. So, Dragon Force is an Underdark team. Uh, Final Gamut is our, an Archaeon team. Um, Melanie, when Final Gamut are up to bat... Uh, your relic will casually mention that Final Gamut's from the same plane that Bane currently resides. Hmm. So their team is actually made up of uh, uh, this is uh, the, so they're made up of a, a goblin, a hobgoblin, an ogre, an orc, and another and another orc. And there's like a murmur through the crowd. Their target, they heard, was an ancient green dragon they took down. Um, on the other side, uh, Dragon Force, uh, their team is made up of um, uh, the Sturf Neblin and Kobold that Zaitari saw. Um, a weird being that looks like it's a biped made of crystal uh, a doppelganger and uh, the dwarf that Zaitari saw at the pool uh, their target apparently was an ancient flame dragon so whoever knows who that is um, and even though Dragon Force fights vi uh, valiantly it's final gamut that takes the 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 match um as of, of the team who seems to be who's like the person who's getting the most killing blows or like doing the most damage maybe a spellcaster who's wreaking havoc or a rogue that's just slitting everyone's throats or something um i yeah so it was the ogre uh, whose name you catch is named Bash. Hmm. He looks like okay. he's taking care of a lot of the individual, but it seems like the Hobgoblin is directing traffic. Um, and it appears that one of the orcs appears is a druid, because he shapeshifts during the, the fight. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and it looks like the other orc is providing uh, range support. But he's not doing that much. It looks like it's mostly the hobgoblin and ogre that are like 
taking out the majority while the little goblins take picking off like being more of an annoyance to the ranged individuals than like a threat like interrupting mm -hmm. like concentration and things of that nature okay all right um with seasons of fey and order of the eternal sun it is order of the eternal sun that takes that fight um and they look like strangely enough uh they look like a, a like a some uh, a halfling a a, ro uh, a dwarf a female dragonborn a uh, female human and a male wood elf um they look like they're just a really well coordinated group um looks like everybody is doing equal amounts uh participating in equal amounts in that in that team uh however it is probably the dragonborn who appears to be a paladin and the rogue that are the rogue and warlock that are making like headway through those individuals and for wild fey and matrons of the web it looks like Wild Fae takes that round as well. Um, for them, they're made out of a ragtag group of a satyr, a furblog, a sprite, a brownie, a pi and a pixie. Mm. Um, the satyr they must be a nightmare to go up against. <laughs> The satyr looks like it was he was being a general annoyance, insulting everybody on the other team. Um, the fur bog looks like it was he was providing range support. Uh, it looks like the sprite was uh, the heavy hitting caster, uh, paired up with the brownie uh, appears to be a rogue, and strangely enough, the person who was being the wall was the pixie. She was, like, getting in everybody's business. And she took a lot more hits than she looks like she could take. Mm. Uh, but that round went to Wild Fae. And that is the end of the first day. So, going on will be Shadows of Guilt uh, final gam and Final Gamut going on after the preliminary rounds are done. And then Order of the Eternal Sun and Wild Fae going against Head to Head. But yeah, um, and yes, like, the arena changed from pools of lava to buildings on fire to a rock in the middle of a giant ocean to freaking a maelstrom with a platform in the center to a jungle dappled area. It changed a lot. <laughs> When it changed, was the platform in the center or it always some sort of solid object? No. Mm. Uh, strangely enough, when people fell into air, uh, they didn't seem to have gravity, so it seems like it followed a plane of air rules. Meaning? You just kind of, like, levitate there. Ah. However, if there was lava and somebody's foot was in the lava, somebody's foot went into the lava. Okay. Interesting. Um, but yeah, was there anything anybody wanted to do before their fight the next day? I don't think so. More meditating. <laughs> Try. Um, do we want to have a plan? We want to powwow. Um, yeah, we should probably powwow in character <clears throat> because um, I want to share the information with everybody that I got off uh, the now, you know, rest in peace uh, member <laughs> of that uh, team that we saw get their asses handed to them. Um, of who's on the House of the Triad. That there's like an Asimar and a Kieran and 
whatever else they said. So. Also, I think I'm going to spend some time around like the bars to see if I can just gather any more information on the House of the Triad team uh, using my, you know, persuasive uh, and personable self, uh, if that's all right. Yeah, of course. Um, roll a... Do you want to use persuasion for this or would you like to use like a performance type of deal for this? Uh, they're both the same. But okay. let's go with performance. Okay. As you're schmoozing with uh, the other teams, uh, you learn this from the House of the Triad. Uh, apparently, they don't get out of the house much. Uh, there has been a Kirin. There has been an Asimar scene. There has been um, a creature called uh, Lamasu. Um, it is an individual with a lion's body. Uh, wings of an eagle and the head of a what he appears to be like a bearded human. So it's another celestial creature from what it's interesting. Like. Um, the other individuals include a very strange looking lion that people are unfamiliar with. Um, and the last participant seems to be a small elephant. Hmm. With wings. Oh All no! Right. I know what Please that don't is. tell me we're fighting Lulu. I don't want to fight Lulu. I know what she can do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to kill Lulu. She's so sweet. <laughs> it's not Lulu. It's actually um, the creature that Horton of Horton hears a who and Horton hatches an egg. Hatched. <laughs> it's an elephant bird. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not a holly plant. Get that out of your ma your mind. <laughs> Jared wouldn't do that to us. Mm -mm, definitely not. Of course not. Anyways. So now um, that you know what did you... they kill? What did they kill? Uh, how did? Who? What did they kill? Yeah. What do you mean? What did they kill? To get here. What did they kill to get oh, here? Oh, what did they kill to get here? <laughs> Let me go scroll that. Uh, they killed. Where is it? A. Uh, Dirt's like they haven't killed any of you. A yet. pit fiend. <laughs> okay. They got All a right. pit fiend. Everyone got all these other teams that super cool monsters, and we got an angry rock. Mm -hmm. We just listen. It was because of it was the most conveniently located. I know, but well, that and uh, Melanie kind of single handedly fucking destroyed it. It was well, it was uh, taking extra damage from half the stuff I did. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, did you guys want to strategize? Well, while Zatari's out getting information, I'll go meditate some more, and then I guess we can get together at dinner time and just talk strategy while we eat. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so blah blah blah, that's all I learned from kind of doing my information gathering for the day for the team that we'll be fighting. Uh, seems like a lot of, <clears throat> lot of celestial types, non-humanoids. Um, honestly, I'm wondering if Banish would work on just getting rid of one of them really quick. But then again, celestial types, I think, are quite charismatic. So it might not be wisest course of action. It might be worth a try. Yeah, it might be. Fair enough. Ha no one's doing like two matches in one day, right, Dirt? Uh, no, no. Uh, everybody, it's one fight per day. Uh, by the way, uh, you guys uh won 1500 from your bets each. Woo! Yay! Oh, I think that let me. Yeah, it's fine. It's loading. Um, <clears throat> honestly, I trust most of our combat skills. The thing I'm concerned about is uh, this arena. 
the speed at which it changes. It could particularly fuck me over. It could screw any one of us, but you all have more options than I do of getting out of it. Um, um, if I'm dumped into lava, I'm in trouble. You and me both. I have a token of featherfall you could use if you wanted it. But it won't move you away from the thing you're falling into, just kind of make you fall slower into the thing you're falling into, which is <laughs> possibly not that good. There hasn't been like much vertical and like like there's been some verticality, I'm sure people flying and stuff, but like within sixty ish feet of the floor, I'd I'd say right there. What? And not much verticality in the combat that's been going on. Uh no. No. not like people going like hundreds of feet up or anything no, like that. No, 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 no. You didn't see any like gravity situation changes. <sighs> the gravity stays in one direction. I guess I do have reverse gravity. Hope we don't fall into lava then, Rain. Right? Uh, fingers crossed. I wanna say it's that fly. I'm 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 going to kind of hope that when the field starts out, the ground doesn't immediately turn into lava. That would be really fucked. But I mean, if it does, then yeah, I don't know. I think any of us are going to be fucked, except for probably tailed up with the broom and being able to cast fly. But um, <laughs> but mobility is something to consider when you're. Choosing what to uh, bring on the day. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I have Dimension Door and my uh, a tight weird option. misty step. We'll just put it that way. Um, Quick question, Derek. Was Lava playing by the rules of the rule book? You know, it could do like 40, 70, 60 damage in one turn. Um... So for the people who went into the lava that you saw during the fir uh, first round, it didn't mm -hmm. kill anybody. It looked like it hurt a lot. It's but it, baby's first lava. It, but it looked like it didn't <laughs> kill. Like, death by lava was not a thing in the first round. Okay. However, they weren't completely submerged in it. They didn't do a full dive in the lava, but no. they, uh, they just got close to it. Yeah. Um, because we're going to be fighting teams of people, I'm going to not have my mansion prepared since we already have <clears throat> wonderful accommodations here. And uh, instead, I'm going to um, take something called prismatic spray. So, mm -hmm. hopefully, that can deal with a bunch of people at once because I don't really have anything else that's like big AoE damage except for well I have do I did I take chain lightning okay no I, I do have a lot of options for it but you know prismatic spray is kind of my favorite option out of the seventh level spells and Tilda has force cage so mm -hmm. whether I bring it or not is really up for debate, but yeah, I do have force cage. Yeah, I think eventually force cage is going to be like a clutch move, but for now, maybe I don't know. It is a very good lockdown. Well, okay, it's my she takes forever because I have a billion fucking spells. Okay, mm. <clears throat> tell me about it. Uh, but. Tilda, is there anything you know about the celestial creatures that will be fighting on this team? Derrida, is there anything I know about the celestial creatures we'll be fighting <laughs> on this team? Roll an arcana check, or religion check. Oh. Well, um... Let's see, arcana... Is that... Religion is still that... Yeah. Oh. I didn't even do roll my uh thing today. Yeah, my court and rolls. It's fine. Nineteen is fine. It sucks, but it's fine. 
Uh, the Kirin, both the Kirin and um, Lamasu are both celestial creatures. Uh, both have uh, ma- set, uh, it seems like innate and magical abilities. Uh, Kirin is post- probably has more innate and magical abilities. Uh, the Masu is large. Uh, you've heard stories of them being able to heal people. Um, you've also heard stories of them able to pounce like a lion, arrive in mm-hmm. other places where it seems to like teleport to. Uh, the Kirin has been seen to also, you know, do a lot of abilities that like assist people, uh, heroes in need. Uh, healing them and whatnot. Um, the lion that Zaitari has described sounds like it's what's known as a foo lion. Uh, typically, oh, they, okay. they Sick. typically they act as guardians uh, for temples and whatnot. Um. Uh, and, you know, they're usually geared to take out evil individuals. Mm-hmm. So, um, they're not as magically, uh, they don't seem to have as many inna- magically innate abilities as a Kirin or a Lamasu. Um, the Asamir could be anything for, for all you know. Um, and you're probably dealing with a Holly fan. And we're probably dealing with the holy things. Now, if we're fighting these things, um, what are our chances of going to hell when we finally die? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, serious question. Much like, higher. We're, just, we're, we're fighting angels for fun, basically. So, like, on a scale of 1 to 10. I think they'll be more in more trouble for being here than we'll be in for, try for fighting them. So I wouldn't worry too just much. Just don't kill them. There we go. I'll kill them. Well, I wasn't planning on killing anyone except Gokor. Maybe Noah. Good plan. Yeah, probably Noah. It might be a good idea. Yeah. Just kind of nip that problem in the bud. Sadly, we'll only get the chance to fight one or the other of them. That's not true. No, Aren't we'll be able to both? find both. No, they're both. Uh, Gokor's on our side. Uh, Noah's on the other. Mm-hmm. Oh, I apparently. We beat Gokor. We'll most likely end up fighting Noah. Just Gokor's the mini boss. Noah's the boss. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. We'll we'll do them in the semifinal. Or if final. we get there. Quarterfinal. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, semi. Uh, wait. Because the last match is the final, so these would be the right. two parts of their semifinals. Quarterfinals lead to the semifinals. So no, we'll, we'll see Shadow of Guilt in the semifinal. Yeah, because it'd be the last match before the final. Because it's the Right, on which the... we would be fighting against the Exalted, most likely. Probably. Just given. Story wise, like story. Yeah, they came up with a lot of. (laughs) They could, if Jared decides to be random about it. But you know that's not fun. I mean, maybe this whole thing was just to make me and uh, Datari lose all our money. (laughs) That's true. We're gonna bet it all. Oh, the exalted, and they're gonna fucking lose in the first match. That would have been hilarious. That'd be really that would be funny. hilarious. That'd be like the team, like the high school movie, where the other enemy football team gets all the brand new equipment and all the shiny new uniforms and all those kind of stuff, and everyone thinks they're gonna win, but then they're ass because they don't practice. Yeah, or the other team mm-hmm. has a dog, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
dog who surprisingly plays basketball. There's nothing like, in the rules that says a dog can't play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Airbud. And that Soccer movie made eventually, me cry right? so hard when I was a kid. It's the first time I actually cried in the theater. Yeah. Oh. I never, I've never seen those movies, mostly because uh, my mom hates watching those kinds of movies with animals, because mm. she's just always afraid that something's going to happen to the animal, and I don't blame her. Fair <laughs> I enough. fucking hate it too. Anytime I see an animal, I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ! If something happens to this cat, I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> There's a website that's called like, Yeah, does, does the dog, dog die? die? Yeah. You two could probably benefit from such a. Yeah. A website from yeah, the... that's a good point. Um, but anyway, though, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'm really tired. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I like I'm kind of throughout most of that. I was kind of spacing out. Um, I got yeah. the whole disintegrate thing. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, fluffy boy. <laughs> he likes being right by my mouse hand. Yeah, I know what fluffy that's like. boy. That's your good boy. Um, if you're tired, um, okay. So the next game will be after KK comes back. Uh, oh, the 27th. I'm sorry, guys. That's okay, I'm not super awake. I don't know if I want to start a match right now. Yeah, I mean, we'll have a fight. Yeah. But I do want to... Uh, I The one thing I wanted to do before we hopped off, because I just had the idea. Um, I'd like to go try to find Noah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to kill him. No. <laughs> <laughs> I want to kill him in his sleep. That's more of a task for Rain. I just want to go talk to him. Okay. Um, Did you want any backup? I was about to say, on? are you going on neutral territory? Uh, Yeah, no, I was just trying to go talk to him. Uh, I mean, listen, if he tries to fuck with me, then he's out of the tournament, so... <laughs> and you're potentially dead. Dead, yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess. <sighs> oh, yeah, huh. Very well. Uh, I feel like everybody else is too heated in this. So um, I'll ask Aoife after everybody's kind of split off for the e evening to go to bed or whatever. Yeah, um, I'm down. I love harassing middle-aged people. Great. Um, Let's go find Noah. <laughs> I'm going to try anyways. Okay. Um... You don't find Noah, but you hear from, like, a couple of the taverns that uh, uh, Ishala has been, you know, entertaining people, telling people stories. Um, gen gen generally being a, you know, just bubbly ball of entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, so it's easy to track her down, and it seems like everywhere she goes, uh, the... Uh, the um, the roguish fellow, the the halfling is with her. Mm -hmm. Um, so you could probably find them pretty easily. Um, okay. It's not too hard for to track them down. Um, who you learn that the the rogue, his name is L. E L. Okay. Um, and at the moment they're hanging out at the uh at the Mangosteen Alley, and. When when you enter the establishment, um, you know uh, Ishala was, is telling a wild story about um, a nobleman with his pants, uh, you know, you know, catching him with his pants down, and him falling into a fountain uh, that was supposed to be a uh, it was a giant fondue fountain. Hmm. Cheese or chocolate? Uh, chocolate. Hmm. Um, and she's at the end of your story, a tail end of your story, wh her story when you guys, you know, arrive. 
Um, oh, hello there. It's nice to see you again. And she'll peel herself away from the crowd to say hi to you. Hello. Uh, Zaitari, was it? Yes, uh, it's Zaitari. Uh, would Noah happen to be around? Uh, Noah's being a stick in the mud and staying at the, at the, uh, the villa. Hmm. Well, I was hoping to just to have, like, a... Sort of a one-on-one -on -one chat, uh, with him, but... I mean... You if can... you're kind of more of the face of the group, then maybe you'll be able to answer the one question that I really have. Okay, I can certainly try. Uh, sometimes that, that man is hard to read. What do you want the wish for? Oh. Huh. Well. Listen, there's a very good chance that we might end up fighting you. Your friend I... wants my friend's relic to mm. conquer a country. Uh, yes, yes. He told us about that. <laughs> uh, something about pride, lineage, blah, 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 whatever. Um, well, the wish is a personal issue. It's a wish that the entire group has agreed upon. Um, and it's kind of finalizing all of our goals so mm. you know each one of us has a hand in this particular wish but however i genuinely don't feel very comfortable talking about it without you know everybody else's approval you know how that is sure <clears throat> is the goal old ones related now that I don't... It is not. Um, that is kind of a Inside thing. Inside check. Uh, she seems yeah, I'm going to do that as well. Yeah. She, uh, Damn. Satara, she's hard to read. Aoife, she seems to be telling the truth. Cool. No, it's something else. Uh, something else. Not old one related. We are... Um, we are aware of their presence. That we're going to try to take care of. Yes, uh, I believe that so are we. Mo mostly the reason I wanted to try to talk to Noah again, since he kind of just rolled up on our keep and wanted to challenge Melanie in a year to sword to conquer a country, seemingly to prepare it for the war with the old ones. I was hoping that maybe we could chat about just joining forces and ending this stupid spat. Mm. Noah is a... I'm not gonna lie. And she kind of looks down at L. Noah is kind of a prideful son of a bitch. Once he's got his mind on something, then... He is carrying Bane. It doesn't really surprise me too much. Yeah. The Bane cord relation, you know, I've tried to tell him, look, maybe we can, you know, maybe we can work together after I get my issues settled with, you know, the country above there, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, so you, uh, also have problems with the Duranithil as they look up the map. <laughs> um, Let's just say Corellan thinks they've lost their way. Zaytari just has a stroke in the middle of <laughs> <Yes>. this conversation. <laughs> Let's just say uh, Corellan <laughs> believes the, his people have lost their way, and I happen to agree. So uh, doesn't like that Sahinine's, like, the thing there? No. No. It, it's not that. It's... There's a, yeah, thing, there's a thing that happened a very, very, very long time ago before any of us. That caused them to think the way they do. Corellan doesn't like it. I got the feeling that Sakinine doesn't like it either. But you know, I don't have any connection to her, like direct connection to her. So this is just a, hypo hypo a hypothesis I have. Um, I'm hoping, and she she pats the long sword that we're gonna be able to to to, to solve that problem. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that uh, my group would also agree. That we don't really have a strong opinion on Dorenithil. 
uh, considering that they kind of just murdered people that we were associating with for a little bit. I see. I'm I'm very sorry. Uh... Did you hear what happened recently to the Temple of Sahinang? I did hear what happened. It's it's frankly terrible. It is. It's kind of a tragedy. Yeah. Very unfortunate. Yes. Truly. Roll an insight check. Sure. <laughs> I'm kind of like, it's a tragedy, but also like, yeah, they yeah. are kind of assholes. Maybe not with that amount of loss of life, but... <laughs> oh, man, come yeah. on! <laughs> <laughs> so, Hari, you're just like, uh-huh, you, you're kind of looking at the sword like, hmm, that maybe, 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 maybe that could have been something at some point. Um, I know, right? I want it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very nice looking sword. Uh, it's It's like, like inlaid with diamonds and like total like Car Carellan type of aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Aoife, you get the sense that she is, you know, very genuinely troubled by what had happened recently. Um, but you also get the sense that she is like, when she's explaining, oh, yeah, we're going to change the Redafel soon, uh, Pat, Pat Sword, you get the sense that she, she's speaking with complete confidence. She ha knows exactly what she's doing during this conversation mm -hmm. exchange. Okay. Um, but I do agree. I do agree that Noah and his stubbornness could be, you know, a little pff, a pain in the butt most of the time. Is he married? Noah? <laughs> I've, yeah. never, I've never seen him with anybody. If, if he's married and has kids, then maybe this is like a home life situation and he's just projecting. No, I think it's more of the he was a his, once like a slave gladiator type deal, doesn't like the warlords type deal. Yeah. I think I think also we knew that because I did into some it. research into him. Um uh you know how like those so how, you know how anti-heroes and stories can be oh I have a tragic past oh I have so much trauma I need to work through oh I need to make everybody's life miserable about it and you know you see like we kind of have one of those in our group but <laughs> she's not miserable you see L kind of like nodding his head along with this like yep 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 try therapy oh Trust me, I have try. I have suggested that many of a time. Yoga. It's not very flex. Well, maybe he's not flexible because he doesn't do yoga. It's a cycle. Yeah, he's more of the I lift heavy things and put them down type type of deal. He does have too much of a stick up his ass for yoga right now. So yeah, well, yeah. well, if he will talk to us, let's get coffee. I'll, I'll... Yeah, I mean, I think we would all prefer to talk this out rather than, I don't know, having to fight in a couple months. Yeah, I'll mention I'll mention that to them. I'll try my best, because, listen, I don't want anybody, like, getting, doing the duel thing and accidentally killing one another and whatnot. I'd prefer to, you know, go about my business. Get a yeah, potential I'll, wish. I'll even teach a free yoga class, like... Does he want to learn some basic meditation shit? Yeah. I mean, there's a very real chance that our goals might align and we can help each other. So we kind of just need to talk about it. We've just... I'm sure we've both been busy, both of our groups, so... Oh, 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 definitely. Most definitely. Mo... Where did Elle go? Oh, fuck. She looks Can bad. I just ask really quick, what did you kill? Oh. To get here. Uh, we killed the... Were they the dragon made of ghost group? Uh, they were the dragon made of ghost group. Okay. 
Nice. I seriously want to hear that story because we fought a ghost dragon and also a dragon made of coins. But the dragon made of ghosts sounds wild. Oh, you should hear about another. Um, there's another team up here. I still, I think they're still in the tournament. They fought a dragon with two heads, but the two heads were mind flayer heads. What? <laughs> This is getting Who's so ridiculous. Making these things. I know, right? Like there was another team. I was talking. Uh, uh, well, one of them's dead now uh, on the Oceanic Operata team, and one of the Underdark people fought a Siamese Beholder. That sounds absolutely horrifying. horrible. I agree. And then, like, I five, hate it. Five seconds later, <laughs> like you hear a voice behind you. Yeah, I agree too, boss. It's L. He has like, uh, you know, he's carrying two tankards, and he was he's mm -hmm. walking back. I'm gonna mm -hmm. check myself over real quick, make sure he didn't lift anything <laughs> off me. All right. Uh, um, quick investigation check, I guess. Check checking your pockets and everything. Not good at that, but I don't have much on my person anyway, so. Uh, it, doesn't, it seems all your stuff is like accounted for. <sighs> Hand, you see El Hand's um, Ishala tankard. Thanks, bud. Did you? And El's like, nope. Okay. <sighs> and we'll say we did ask our uh, kind of guide here what the price is for stealing and you get kicked out of the tournament. So uh, do be careful about that. Oh, he's... He's, uh, it's not the stealing I'm worried about at this point. Hmm. He's just being a stinker. Mm. He... Uh, I'll talk. We we can talk more about it later. But yeah, I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll a prankster, I'll, perhaps? Huh? A prankster, perhaps? Oh, yes. Oh, we have one of those, too. And he's, like, he's giving you guys, like, Elle's giving you these doe eyes, and, like, Ishala's, like, looking at him, not buying it at all. <sighs> well this hey, was a Elle. more pleasant chat than I was expecting not gonna lie Elle, you and me we need to link up at some point because there's somebody I would love <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, if you can pull one over on Gokor that would be rad as fuck I want their whole villa stink bomb <laughs> um L, L, L like lifts his tanker and says we'll, we'll, we'll talk business um we could talk but Ishala's like, yeah, I'll definitely pass the message along to Noah. But yeah, like I said, we'll try my best. Well, good luck in your match in a couple days against, uh, what is it, Searing Sunrays? Mm. Yes, them. Um, yeah, the. I think that I. That was an I, interesting. <laughs> yes, them. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I saw. I. I I was scoping them out earlier. A uh, couple get a uh, couple get Zara in that group. Mm. Um. So, what did they kill L? Uh, Nightwalker boss. Nightwalker it was, I guess. Nightwalker. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Thing that was gonna that we tried to not fight. Oh that Jesus! Yeah, that's like, right. Mine released at the end. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, my eyes. Thing that we saw and said no, thank you. Yeah, Zaytari's eyes kind of widen a bit and then go like, "That's actually pretty impressive." Uh, there was one on the entrance to like this castle where we had to go fight a Draco Lich. Uh, long story. Oh, Anyways. have you been to the Shadowfell as well? Yeah, it's a bad place, isn't it? Yeah, well, especially the part that we were in. Ah, but uh, there was a Night Walker in. We did a lot to avoid it. Uh, and then there were a bunch <laughs> coming up the walls of the castle, so oh, we had to get out. Hard things. Um, but yeah, we're going against them. Um, we've got some intel on them, so hopefully it won't be as hard as a fight as I think it will be. But um, yeah, good luck to you guys. Maybe we'll see each other in the finals. Maybe even sooner. I. So do definitely want to hear that story about the ghost dragons. But uh we need to get our rest for the fight tomorrow. All so right. 
All right. Good luck. Um, I was like, sweet dreams. I'm going to very uh, resourcefully spend one of the uses on my spending stone, a sending stone to send a message to L, even though I'm right there. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say, um, he's the beefy old monk, Gokor. He killed a bunch of the kids and he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you see, like, as when you say this, you see, like, L kind of, like, rubbing his chin. Like, being like, hmm. <laughs> like, Interessante. <laughs> I like this guy. Yeah, lock eyes and give like a little salute as we leave. Okay. Um, he's gonna like nod and keep stro- stroking his chin. Isala's gonna look at him it's like, what the fuck are you thinking now? <laughs> um, yeah, no, they'll, they'll, they'll walk off. Okay. I'll just say to Eva that was a more pleasant conversation uh, than I thought it was going to go. So, I like them. Yeah, they seem like cool people. Uh, no one needs to go to therapy. Maybe fine. Oh, yeah. Good God. Yeah, I think Noah needs a little bit of help, but maybe the rest of his team is a bit more level-headed. <sighs> okay. Good job luring them into a trap to kill them, Zaytari. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, I guess we can end here, and we can start the round, the fight, uh, next time. Did we maybe, I don't know if you're that far ahead, like, roll initiative and be, like, ready to hop into it in two weeks? Oh, uh, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we could do that easy. Alright. So let me go to the arena that you guys will be starting in. Isn't it pretty? Is it just like oh, a nice dappled nice, arena? Nice, nice pool. pool. Nothing bad's gonna happen. It's great. Yeah. You know what, guys? Let's just have a truce. Let's just chill out in the water. Yeah, we'll both agree to eat the suicide berries together, and then we'll both win. <laughs> yeah. That's how it works. Mm-hmm. Sorry. That's a big holly fan. That, that's the holly fan is not that big. Oh, holly <laughs> fan. Uh, let me just get out, everyone. Else. I would say that's probably even bigger than Lulu in her mammoth size. What the fuck was that? The <laughs> looks so funny. <laughs> and then we have Kieran. If you punch him directly in the face, you get a one-way ticket to the third level of hell. I'll be able to get myself out of it. It's fine. He is actually huge. Uh, God, I forgot Karen's big. <laughs> yeah, they're giant. And then the Asamar. I love that there are all these like really crazy looking celestials, and then just a dude. And then it's just a guy. The um the foo. Lion. I'll check the Foo Lion size again. Oh, I remember looking at the Foo Lions in a. Uh, what is it, Tome of Beasts or they're what are the, cool. the other one? I can't remember, but they're they're so fucking weird. Um. <laughs> and they will. Kieran will probably start over there. Actually, Foo Lion and Alamasu will probably start over there. Be there, Kieran will be there, and little Holly Fant will be in the back. And we can put up the initiative tracker. Let me take away this bound colossus and this earth elemental. Um, Melanie, and uh, you, I gotta change that to round one. And then round one. Ooh, terrible initiative. Yeah, um, not great. I, mean, I really so... want to make a line for that Holly fan and kick it like a football. Mm-hmm. Punt it out of the arena. So... I was hoping to go first so that I could prismatic spray it and not get anybody in the crossfire. Alas. <laughs> so Fulain is going... Then, and then... Uh, 
Did I get any mail today? Then the holly pants will go. Okay. Uh, that is uh -huh. Twenty eight, excuse me. Yep. Did it roll a natural twenty? Not that silence is yeah, that silence is telling me that maybe not. Fuck. Oh no. That's a lot of decks. I don't like it. So yeah, this will be the order that we begin next time. Sick. So not next week, but the week after next. Yes, correct. Because somebody yes. has to go to Disneyland. Sorry. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh. Uh, question, DM. Yeah. What's 11 in the turn order? Uh, oh, and... sorry. That should have been 11, and that should have been the Holly Fant. <laughs> okay. My bad. So okay. Holly Fant's going over there. Ah, uh, okay. I was very confused. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's your I'm dex modifier? I'm, I'm a, I have a plus five, but I have a plus six to initiative thanks to my stone. Okay, so we're tied. So probably before the food lion then. Oh, crazy, crazy far in advance. Um, I'm probably not going to be available on October 15th. Okay. I'm getting new carpet installed. Okay. Ooh. Sweet, new carpet. Yeah, I need to be able to get around my bedroom with my crutch or my cane. <laughs> so I need, like, the crappy, short, fiber, glued down ADA carpet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, if I get to move my, my giant bed and then move it back. Um, get so to. I'm probably not going to be available on the 15th. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, this is the order. We can jump into it next time we come around. Sounds good. All right.